things I have lost. An accent. I have to imagine that at some point in my life I had an accent, one that proved I'd grown up just outside of Jackson, Mississippi. Over the years, I trained myself to say, you guys, instead of y'all. I didn't like remarks about where I was from. Now, though, I don't like the remarks of, wow, you have no accent at all. Two babies, maybe three. In 2020, I lost two babies, one after another, before they grew enough to even look like little humans. Months later, I went to the bathroom and a puddle of blood fell out of me. With a splat, it hit the tile floor and sat there, gelatinous and dark. Brian, I called. My husband came running. Brian, what if that was another one? Virginity. I say that I lost my virginity because that's the phrase the collective we decided to employ, but I guess it's more that I gave it away because I was tired of holding on to it. If I could have it again, I'd have given it away even sooner, but to someone else. I'd have given it to the first boy I ever loved, so I guess this one is more of a lost opportunity. Multiple copies of the book Little Big by John Crowley. It seems I have lost one copy of this book for every apartment that I've ever lived in. I have never read it. I just ordered a new one, and I plan to keep a watchful eye on it. Reading. In my worst episodes of depression, I find myself unable to read. I can choose a book, hold it in my hands. I can look at the words, but my brain refuses to understand them. I read that both Sylvia Plath and Virginia Woolf were unable to read when they were depressed. In her suicide letter to her husband, Woolf wrote, You see, I can't even write this properly. I can't read. It's a cruel trick of the mind to not allow even this one escape. Music